the third, more than 4,000 fans at the Miami Fronton cheered and chanted, urging their team on in the first match of the best of three series in the National High Life Championship. Miami responded with eight straight points in the stretch to defeat a talented team from Milford, Connecticut by a score of 21 to 12. Milford has their backs against the wall, and tonight Miami has a chance to win the first national title in the sport of High Life. High Life front on Dania, Florida. On TV, a service of national subscription television, Miami Fort Lauderdale presents the NAJF National High Life Championships. Tonight, game two of the best of three series between Milford, Connecticut, and Miami, Florida. Hello, everybody. I'm Marty Fleischman. We're at the site of the first National High Life Championship. You know, Miami High Life was the site of the first Fronton in 1926. There's never been a national title decided in over 55 years, but there may be one decided here tonight. It's Milford, Connecticut against Miami, Florida. Davis in the broadcast tonight, Kevin Kaufman, who is an expert on the Miami team, and Steve Burry, who knows the Milford team and should provide us with some valuable insight. Steve, Milford started off with a great front quarter named Zuleika. He went down with an injury midway through the match. Now they have Oscar substituting. How does that affect the Milford team? Well, Marty, uh, Zuleika was a good player. He went down halfway through the qualifying rounds in the fourth round. After that, Oscar came in for him. Oscar's a good player. He's a strong player. He's played in eight major frontons in the United States, but he just doesn't have the ability that, uh, that Zuleika had to put the point away quickly. Well, you know, Miami had some problems, Kevin. They also had injury problems. Aura, who was a great young front quarter, went down also at the midway mark. But his substitute was who some consider the top front quarter in the world, Joey. Uh, how's it to have Joey in the front court for the Miami team? Well, I don't think you could have gotten a better substitute for the Miami team than Joey. Aura, a great player, but as you say, Joey considered one of the top players in the world. His backcourt teammate, Elordui, is going to be complimented in Joey's game. He has confidence in Joey. It gives him the ability to throw his right-hand shot, some consider the hardest in the world. This tournament started way back in December. Uh, there were eight cities represented, 16 of the greatest players in the land. Now there are two teams left. How did they get to the finals? Let's find out. It was the first time that the top players from eight different frontons gathered to face each other on the same court. At stake, $25,000 in prize money and the prestige of national champion. Fans from Orlando followed their team of Saeed and Mindy around the state. Their hearts were big, but it was not enough. Young stars such as Daytona Beach's Inclon found that early tournament jitters can prove costly. Seen here against Orlando's Saeed and Mindy, Inclon showed that the Daytona Beach team could not be taken lightly and would definitely be a team to be reckoned with next year. Newport, Rhode Island's duo of Lopetegui and Mindia could have been called the Over the Hill Gang, since both veterans were in their mid-30s. But their patience and experience showed and kept them in the hunt to the very end. They failed to qualify by just a single point. One of the pre-tournament favorites had to be Dania's Waristi and Andranua. While fans waited for them to make a stretch run, it just never happened, and they finished a disappointing seventh place. When the smoke cleared, Miami, Milford, Tampa, and Palm Beach would make the playoffs. In the semifinals, Palm Beach stars Saez and Laka squared off against Miami's Joey and Alordui, seen here in red. Joey, substituting for the starting front quarter Ottera, who went down with an injury earlier, showed why he is one of the top players in the world. 
Though Saez and Laka attempted to keep the ball deep away from Joey, they still had to contend with a cannon in the backcourt, the hard-throwing Elordui. The Palm Beach team found the Miami pair overpowering and lost the best of three semifinals in two straight. Miami was in the finals. Meanwhile, Tampa and Milford, Connecticut were battling to see who would make the finals against Miami. Milford, seen here in blue, had injury problems of their own when star front quarter Zuleika scratched almost midway in the tournament. Facing Tampa's Aramayo and Arcarazzo II, Milford had a very strong front man, Asuka, and a backcourter named Boniguin, who amazed the crowds with his dramatic saves. It was a duel between the smooth Aramayo and the aggressive Asuka, neither wanting to lose the battle. The best of three series went to the limit, neither team giving ground. After all, this was a shot at the national championship. Boniguin kept the Tampa team off balance. Asuka could smell victory. Finally, it was over. Milford the winner, and nobody wanted it more than front quarter Asuka. So it'll be Milford against Miami for the national championship. This national tournament finals is just moments away. We'll be back with the first serve right after this.